the interpretation. In the interpretation, the inflammatory regions of the jawbone, that means the main is the dental cavity or the pulp and periapical pathology. So pulp and periapical pathology. So pulp and periapical pulpitis, which is the most common region which is filled with C. So alternate patient which comes to us is always with a pain. And that pain is always because of the pulpitis or the infection which has been reaching. Reaching to the pulp. Once the infection or the dental caries is reached to the pulp, it will cause a pain. So sequelae of pulpitis is start from the occlusal caries, that means caries in the enamel, caries in the dentin, there will be a sensitivity, caries near to the pulpal tissue, so the patient will get a pain with some insultation like the cold or with the sweet or with the foot lodgement whenever they are. Patient whenever they are involved, remove that foot lodgement, patient is happy. That always suggests that the caries is involving into the dentin. So whenever it is in the dentine, it will cause always a sensitivity and that is always with some insultation. Remember, so the pulpitis pain will be without any insultation or without any predisposing factors. But when it is dentinal exposure, this also will cause. So what are the cause for the sensitivity? So the sensitivity will be because of the dentinal exposure, because of the caries, it may be because of the atrial, it may be because of the abrasion, it may be because of iatrogenic trauma when you are going for a cavity cutting and all this, at that time also will be leading it to the uh, exposure of the dentinal tissues. And when it reaches to the pulp, then we call it as a pulpitis. It may be acute pulpitis that will cause a very, very severe to the patient. So we will get a pain, a phone call from uh, your patient at a midnight. So that patient is saying that I cannot believe the pain, I cannot bear the pain. So severe pain is there of the pulpitis. So this pain of the pulpitis, when it is acute pulpitis, uh, it has been graded uh, chronologically. This is the third most severe pain in the body. So the most severe pain in the body will be seen in a myocardial infarction or heart attack, which we call it. The second severe pain, which will be seen in the terminal stage of the malignancy, that is your cancer, and that also involving the norendis, then also it is a very, very severe pain. In that sequence, the third most Severe pain is always a acute pulpitis. So in this acute pulpitis, patient has a severe pain. Patient has a extraoral, sometimes intraoral swelling. Patient has a fever. Patient has a lymphadenopathy. A patient looks a cell. See, always all the signs of acute inflammation. That means the loss of function will be there. Patient cannot chew from that side. Whenever patients uh, will be cannot chew from that side, and when you take the history, you'll see that patient will give you a unilateral mastication history because I'm not chewing from that side. You'll see a lots of calculus and deposits on the affected side. Okay, this you can treat it with the antibiotics, with the analgesics, and uh, remove the pulp. No need for the root canal many times because it is not involving the radicular pulp. So you just remove the coronal pulp, what I think called as the pulpotomy, fill it with the calcium hydroxide dressing, and after three weeks you can restore it with your routine restoration, maybe the silver or the glass isomer, whatever. When it is then from that, it will turn to a chronic pulpitis where the symptoms will be a mild. So there will be a mild pain, mild discomfort may be there, the lymphadenopathy will be there, but uh, not a very enlargement, but inflammatory signs will not be there much more. And patients, again, a urinary investigation, patients will you chew that side, patient will get pain. Sequelae of the pulpitis will depend upon the three factors. Always remember, this I always ask in the viva, that means the sequelae of pulpitis depends upon which factor. Number one is the virulence of the organism. That means whether it is acute or the chronic, this will be depend. Second factor, that is the local immunity of an individual. So the defense mechanism of that individual, number two point is there, and number three is the functioning of the two. So depend upon these three factors, the sequelae of the pulpitis. Because you'll see many times, badly carries tooth comes, the patient does not have. And very small pit caries is there, or the proximal caries, the patient is I'm getting pain this, but not getting the pain. Root faces won't be causing the pain because there is already a pulp necrosis. Pulp has been disquamitated, so there is no signs of acute inflammation, so patient won't be getting pain because the virulence of the organism will be less. And when the patient is not chewing from that side, patient won't be getting the pain from that side. And pain side patient when start chewing from that side, patient will get see that is your loss of function. 
So that means whenever there is sequence of pulpitis, it will be causing because of the three lesions. So three reasons that we always remember in the viva. One is the virulence of the organism. Number two is the defense mechanism of an individual, and the third one is the functioning of the ring. So this is the sequence of pulpitis. It will cause acute pulpitis. It will cause chronic pulpitis. It will cause periapical abscess. That is acute one, chronic one. That will lead to granuloma. Will get to a periodontal cyst, or it called as the A radicular cyst. Then from then what it will lead to osteomyelitis, or sometimes it will cause the abscess. Then it will lead to a cellulitis. That means the facial space involvement. That also we will going to see. Or most of the time there can be a sinus formation. Okay. So but the common which will be asked in the viva is about the abscess, granuloma, and the cystic lesion. So here we will see. As shown in the arrow, you can see there is a restoration seen with the premolar, and that restoration is quite deeper, so that may not be a complete caries has been removed, and the infection has reached from the coronal pulp to the radicular pulp, and then it will reach to the will reach to the periapical tissues, and when it is reaching to the periapical tissue, what you see is this is your widening of the periodontal ligament space. Okay. So this widening of the periodontal ligament space, which is there, then this will called is a apical periodontitis, or called as a acute periapical abscess. This also again a very severe condition, and patient will come to you to assist the treatment. Okay, because this will cause a severe pain, this will cause a fever, this will cause a loss of function, this will cause lymphadenopathy. This again will lead to pain, and pain. The diagnostic feature for this apical periodontitis is that as there is a collection of the pus at the apex of the tooth, so tooth will be lifted from the socket. So it will be extruded from the socket, and patient will say that I am getting mobility of the tooth. That is not because of the periodontal tissues, but this is because of the pus is collected at the apex and the tooth is lifted. So whenever patient try to chew from that side, this extruded tooth will touch the antagonist, and patient will get. So the patient cannot chew even from the other side also, which is the normal because this tooth is extruded. That is a typical sign for a pical periodontitis where the tooth will be extruded from the socket. Here again, you can remove the coronal pulp, the radicular pulp, proceed for the routine root canal treatment followed by the jacket. If it is not re, uh, treated again, then this will be leading to another one. That is called as the periapical abscess. So that is the infection will reach. To the pulpal tissue through the apical foramina, and it will start degrading the bone. It it will start absorbing, resolving the bone, and when with the inflammatory lesions, it will resolve the bone. We'll see a reducency at the apex of the tooth. You can see this reducency at the. So what you see, what you see is the loss of lamina dura. You'll see the widening of the periodontal lamina, and there will be a reducency which is of a irregular shape. Okay, so there will be a irregular shape, a reducency at the apex of the tooth that is suggestive of a periapical abscess formation. Okay, size, shape will be a varied one, depend upon the virulence, depend upon the immunity of that individual. Okay? So with this, you can see sometimes with the same periapical uh, reducency or the same periapical abscess formation. With the two factors, as I told you, one is the virulence of the organism, and another is the defense mechanism of an individual. So, if that defense mechanism of that individual is a good one, that we see in the younger one, and the virulence of the organism is less, then the body will start healing of that abscess one with a granuloma formation, and that will see a periapical granuloma. So. The radiolucency of the periapical granuloma, well, like you see, is always will be lined by a radiopaque border. Okay, you can see a uh, like a radiopacity surrounding to the radiolucency. Radiolucency will be more easy as compared to the periapical radiolucency because there is a more granuloma. So it will be a well-defined one. Like the periapical is irregular, the borders are blending with the normal bone. Here you will see a separation between the normal bone and the radiolucency of the affected bone by a radiopaque border. Okay, this is called as the periostitis, which will be seen again here. The treatment of choice will be a root canal treatment. So in the same presence of The periapical granuloma. Sometimes, if there is a, by a developmental anomaly, there are the presence of a cell rest of molasses. So, in that lesion of a granuloma, if there are the cell rest of molasses, then it will be a 
there can be a expansion increase in number of that and the proliferation of this cell rest of molasses and that will lead to a cavity formation which will be filled by the fluid that we called it as a periapical cyst or we call it as a radicular cyst okay. so this periapical cyst or radicular cyst will be always a uh, larger than the periapical granule so as the text said it will be less than 1.5 cm or more than 1.5 so that also you will remember so and it will be kind of a larger one and more important that it will always cause the expansion of the cortical plate like you see in the occlusal radiograph you will see there is expansion of the buccal cortical plate so if there is expansion of the cortical plate it will be always suggestive of, of a cystic or a benign tube this also will be a well defined lesion a larger lesion and it will be always have a expansion of cortical plate there will be a bony heart swelling clinically and when we try to aspirate it when with the needle and all this you will see there is aspiration positive for the fluid so which if you ask you cannot aspirate the granuloma you cannot aspirate the periapical abscess but because of the collection of the fluid if you aspirate it that you will see that there will be aspiration of the positive so these are always asked in the examination how you differentiate between the granuloma cyst and the periapical abscess so the radiolucency of the periapical abscess will be irregular one so there is no any cortication while in the granuloma it will be well defined one with cortication and in the cystic lesion with the cortication and there is a bone expansion on the buccal or the lingual cortical plate will expand expansion and it will be a positive for the aspect so this will be your viva question which will be asked you another common which will be asked is in the condensing of stenosis condensing of stenosis is again a focal sclerosing of stenosis a type of a osteomyelitis which will be seen involving only a local region so this will be more common in the younger one second third decade of the life it will be seen in a chronic illness it will be seen in where the virulence of the organism is the lesser one and the immunity of an individual is more then the periapical abscess which is there it will be healed by the individual the body's defense mechanism will start forming a bone surrounding to that abscess so to withstand the masticative forces so that surrounding bone will be seen as a radio opacity surrounding to the periapical abscess so you will always see always a radio opacity and surrounding to that you will see a radio opacity so the size of the radio opacity the shape of the radio opacity will be different but you will see there will be a loss of laminar radio will be there periapical radio opacity will be there and surrounding to that the, uh, the radio opacity will see this we called as the condensing osteitis or the focal sclerosing osteoma this is routinely asked the uh, your uh, short course the condensing osteitis which will be seen in a chronic periapical lesions which will be seen in a youngster which will be seen when the low virulence of the organism whenever the immunity of this lesion so there will be a badly carious too so there will be a periapical abscess there will be loss of laminar dura and there will be a irregular shape a radio opacity surrounding to the periapical radio cells size of radio opacity shape of radio opacity will be a very another one which we called as the lesion is again not treated so there will be a extraoral swelling there will be intraoral swelling as i told you the sinus formation and after that also if no patient is not seeking there like may chances that infection will go downwards by lifting the periosteum involving the soft tissue component of the bone and when it is involving the soft tissue component of the bone we call as a osteomyelitis so that means it is involving the osteoid tissue also and it is involving the myeloid tissues so it will called as a osteomyelitis routinely the osteomyelitis you might have seen a young number of the periapical cases but hardly you might have seen the osteomyelitis case because again you need to have some uh, immunosuppression in that patient so that means the predisposing factors which they are there like if there is a malnutrition like there is a tuberculosis like there is a anemia like there is a diabetes like there is osteopetrosis like there is a paget disease if this predisposing factors are there then only the chances of the periapical infection leading to the osteomyelitis the clinical feature of the osteomyelitis the same one there will be a non vital tooth there will be a bony heart swelling intraoral swelling intraoral extraoral swelling and main there will be a presence of a multiple sinuses okay as you know that this 
the in the most humanities there will be presence of a dead bone that we call as a sequestrum that we see so this sequestrum has to remove from the body and that sequestrum when it is removed from the body it is in always a post formation and for that there will be always a presence of a multiple sinuses in the chronic posture so this is your classification like we have studied in the text of it superiority osteomyelitis chronic superiority osteomyelitis chronic focal sclerosing osteomyelitis that we have seen just now chronic diffuse sclerosing osteomyelitis which will be more common in the older age and then the garis osteomyelitis which is of course a very rare so this is we see here that this acute osteomyelitis you will not see a much more signs on the radiogram patients will be always a vague pain along with same like a periapical okay so in on the radiograph also what we see is sometimes there will be a marrow surface will be whiter one and the trabecula will, will be thinner okay so that we only the signs otherwise the signs and symptoms will be same as a acute periapical abscess formation and when it is lead to a chronic one then it, the acute osteomyelitis or the chronic routine when there is a bone resorption of the bone then we can see a uh, different types of the picture like you see in the here there is a resorption of the bone you can see such type of the picture which will be seen which we call it as a moth eaten type of the appearance okay so the moth eaten type of the appearance again this will be a uh, viva questions or in objective type of the question so moth eaten type of the uh, appearance in the radiograph is common in in the chronic superiority or sometimes even the acute superiority osteomyelitis whenever there is a removal of the bone is there okay so there will be no bone expansion is that or sometimes if you see so whenever there is a bone loss is there so which time the masticative process as it is shown in the by the white arrow what you see is that the new bone formation that we call as a involucral Okay, so the new bone formation, or we call it as the periosteal bone reaction, which will be seen in a chronic osteomyelitis cases. Okay, so now this is like the same one, Gary's osteomyelitis, and the periosteal bone reaction will be seen in the different pattern. This we will call it as the onion skin type of the appearance, which will be seen. So Gary's osteomyelitis, there will be a non-vital tooth. It will be always seen with the first molar or second molar to some extent, premolar, and it will be seen in the second decade of the life. It will not be seen in a older age. Okay. So osteomyelitis, the clinical signs which are there is always the same one. There will be a pain, there will be a discomfort, there will be intraoral, extraoral swelling, there will be intraoral, extraoral sinus formation, there will be fever, there will be lymphadenopathy, and if it is involving the lower or going more deeper one, it will involve the inferior alveolar, so nerve also, then there will be a parasthesia also. So that parasthesia also can be seen in a osteomyelitis. Radiologically, in the acute osteomyelitis, there may, be, may not be any sign when, when it is uh, superiority or the bone pus is coming and the bone resorption has started, then you might have, will, you will see uh, appearance in a type of moth eaten or in a chronic cases when it is there, there will be a bone formation or the periosteal bone reaction in the different pattern. Okay, it may be onion skin type of the appearance or it may be orange peel type of the appearance or it can be a dense bone also. Okay, like this, if you see in a chronic osteomyelitis, the dense bone also can be seen at the apex of the 